Dave, and this is the stage page. Uh, this is a video I've been excited to make ever since I came up with the concept for my channel. There's one conversation that I've had with almost every theater practitioner I've ever met. Bleeding can start in different ways, but the result is always the same. War stories. Now, when I say war stories, what I'm referring to are the countless stories performers have of things that go wrong. Missed entrances, flood lines, costume malfunctions. <coughs> <coughs> Without question, these are my favorite conversations to have with other performers. So, today's video is going to be the first in a series. Every Friday, I'm going to talk to a different performer friend about their own war stories. It'll mostly be actors, but I'm going to try to get some musicians and even teachers on here as well. And what better way to start the series off than to share some of my own war stories. Let's start with high school, where I was in a show called Lend Me a Tenor. Now, it's a farce, and it was my first foray into playing angry old men. I played Saunders, who spent most of the play yelling at his employee Max and dealing with a difficult opera singer named Tito. During one scene, Tito was passed out on a bed, seemingly dead. My character has a fit of rage and leaps onto Tito, straddles him, grabs him by the scruff of the shirt, and starts yelling at him. For some reason, the scene was cursed in our run. One night, I leapt high into the air and came down a little higher up than I was supposed to, landing directly on Tito's stomach and knocking the breath out of him. The next night, our acrobatics proved to be too much for the bed, and when I came down on Tito, the bed had a huge crack and then it slanted all the way down to the ground on the back left corner. So Tito was forced to not only remain dead, but he also had to keep from rolling off the bed at the same time. Now it's final cursed moment. Tito was lying on the bed, lifeless, and my character threw a suitcase onto the bed. Unfortunately, this time, the corner of that suitcase hit him in a place where no one should be hit. In surprise and pain, the actor playing Tito started to sit up, at which point I had to push him back down, yelling in character and then quietly mouthing, I'm sorry, to him. Now, I don't always get so much material from one show. It's usually one or two shining moments per show. Uh, like the time I played Riff in West Side Story and our prop knife actually cut my hand open. Don't worry. I did the mature thing and wiped it all over my white t-shirt because I thought it would make it more realistic. There's also the time I played Romeo, and it wasn't until after I had climbed the balcony for the fourth performance that my mom told me I had a huge hole in my pants and everyone could see my boxers through it. They were not time-appropriate boxers. There's also the time I played Lysander in Midsummer Night's Dream, and while the lovers were making our way up to the mezzanine seats where we shared a scene with the Duke and his wife, we found that a stagehand had locked the door to that entrance. Now, I'm not much for bragging, but one thing I'm proud of is that I've only ever missed one entrance in all my time as an actor. I was playing Minas, a pirate, in Antony and Cleopatra, and I was sitting with the director backstage just chatting about nonsense. I got up and I was getting ready to go check where we were in the show to see if I needed to get ready to go on, when I heard a howling shriek from right behind me. Turns out the director had poured almost the entirety of a steaming hot cup of coffee right onto his nether regions. As I tried to form some inquisitive words, he started whisper shouting, towel, towel. So I ran into the dressing room, grabbed some paper towels, came back and gave them to the director who was now performing some sort of elaborate dance. Then when I went to go check where we were in the show, I got there just in time to see my scene partner giving my one line of the scene for me. I hung my head in shame. Believe it or not, this just scrapes the surface of the kind of stories performers have, and I'm excited to share this theater tradition with you of war stories. I hope you'll come back next Friday for my first war stories session with another actor, my friend Amy, who was a colleague from both my undergrad and a professional summer stock theater at which we both used to work. Thanks for stopping by. Hopefully I'll see you next time.